I am one of the founding principals, partners, and uh, one of the creative directors at Brooklyn Digital Foundry, which is a, a full service creative agency. We work on a wide range of projects in a wide range of industries, uh, doing interactive products, architectural visualization, product visualization, video production, uh, and also uh, communications consulting and campaign management. We have a team of, I think right now we're 11 people, and half of which uh, work on our um, computer uh, graphics oriented projects. We've worked with uh, fashion houses, architects, real estate developers, nonprofit institutions. Uh, the name of the studio comes from a, a deep-seated interest in the palpable quality of digital media. It's always been our belief that digital media has a timber and a texture all its own, which doesn't necessarily fit into words. And what we attempted to do is communicate our commitment to that idea through the name, which is also uh, meant to locate us in a very specific place, because we think a place has an influence over the creative work that we do. And, and you know, Brooklyn was a, a, a location where founding partners and myself really felt strongly that the character of our environment where we started the business inspired us to launch the company and execute the work on a, along a very specific set of aesthetic ideals. Uh, since then, we've, we've, the company has grown to many more people and uh, we are a much, much more diverse set of voices client in this case came to us with the uh, the need to you know, sell real estate. The building is located in a very inspiring place, New York City. So our first impulse is to showcase the beauty of the city as, as a, an important offering that comes along with ownership of a piece of the building that's featured in that image. You know, our first move in this case was to grant both subjects equal airtime within the frame of the image. So that image is as much about the beauty of the New York City skyline as it is about the beauty of that building. Visualization, you know, we begin with a, a model that uh, sometimes starts in Rhino. Um, occasionally it will start in 3D Studio Max. In this case, we were provided a, a Revit model, if I remember correctly, by the client that we bring into one of the platforms I just mentioned in order to enhance the model appropriately for production. Ultimately, it will end up in 3D Studio Max where we begin to apply materials and uh, perform the necessary uh, lighting studies uh, using V-Ray. We'll begin with lighting like most studios do. And uh, once we have the overall space of the image established through careful lighting, then the materials come into play, mainly because it's, it's much harder to establish a sense of space with materials than it is with light. Uh, so we, we see that as the kind of proper hierarchical approach there in order to maintain a powerful composition in the final product. Uh, once we get done in uh, with the uh, rendering the, the necessary passes in, in V-Ray, I will bring those into After Effects and balance them out properly, do the necessary color correction. Uh, there might be some work in Photoshop if there's some post-production effects that we need, but we try very, very hard to do everything in camera, that is to say, within uh, V-Ray and out of 3D Studio Max because we find we get the most accurate lighting effects through that technique. Doing kind of painterly type effects leads to painterly type interpretation. And in most cases, we're going for something that has correct, like perspectival math, uh, light balancing that uh, mimics physical reality. One of the biggest things that has been a huge game changer is, is the caliber of professionals on our team. We have built our team very, very slowly over many years. You know, they're, by now, the, the people that I work with, they've been working with us for many additional years. You know, their skills, and their dedication to the job continues to be the cornerstone of how we move forward on a day-to-day -day basis from year to year as well. And it's also that it's that curiosity and dedication they bring to the table that essentially catalyzes the evolution of our craft in-house. So they, they deserve a ton of credit for making sure that the studio stays healthy and continues to evolve technically and creative. And I've seen you know, our work go from you know, a rather punky attempt at telling a story to you know, some of the most vivid examples of CG artistry that I can think of. I am regularly kind of humbled by you know, their ability to, to push that envelope with every project. 
we are familiar with your company. You know, we look forward to taking advantage of the window of opportunity that winning this award has provided us uh, to better understand the tools and services that your company provides. Sadly, we have not worked with your company before, but this would be a golden opportunity to do so. You know, we are on deadline at the moment and a render farm plays a, a critical role in making sure that deadlines get met. And in the past, there have been times when we have gone to third party services to provide us with the necessary computing power to meet a deadline. And uh, now that we are in touch with Fox, I look forward to me seeing how these, uh, how the uh, facility that y'all have assembled, you know, might assist us in, in making it to that next level. We started the business when architects were just getting familiar with computers. The idea that somebody would make a video to promote an architectural idea was a rather far-fetched notion at the time. Uh, and we began making videos about architecture in uh, 1999. And we had our first major architectural video commission. And major at the time was you know, quite modest. It wasn't it wasn't a, a huge commission in the larger scheme of things, but it was big in the sense that it was the first time we had actually engaged a client about doing video production work for them. And the collaboration resulted in the very first viral architectural video. Viral by architectural means, of course, is more modest than, than a viral video in the larger sense. But uh, when that video went viral, that launched our studio's video production unit because we found ourselves getting a lot of work after that. That wouldn't have happened had we not just been experimenting with the technology, not knowing that a client would come through the door and ask us to put that technology to work. And had we not been experimenting with the technology, when the opportunity did come around, around, we would not have been in a position to provide that client with the services uh, they were looking for at that moment. So my advice to people who are getting started in the visualization industry is always, you know, find what makes you excited about the technology. Let your creativity, the way in which you explore and work with that technology, don't let that experimentation be guided by a concern about marketability. The marketability will come if you're able to attain the kind of clarity of vision with the tools that is in your head.